Chapman will take care of that, Lieutenant. Hop in your trucks and get moving. Take your helmet off, sir. Do you move or do I put you under arrest? Court martial a whole outfit if you'd like. Dear God. This is Private Davy McCord. Good man. He always said he, he wanted to win something someday. He never did. Maybe you could fix up kind of a prize for him. He earned it. You want to take? No. Just try and make up the lost time. Lieutenant, have your men put this stuff back in their trucks. Why? There's a tank outfit bogged down on the road, 15 miles up. You'll have to move up alongside and unload. All right, hold it. Put everything back in the trucks and prepare to move out. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> hey, do you suppose we're going to drop this stuff behind the German line so we'll be waiting for Patton when he gets there? You know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. My family used to say, that boy, Ronald, he'll go far. At the time, I didn't realize how far they meant. <laughs> Good morning, Lieutenant. Morning. How's it going? Well, it's going to go a lot better since you're here, thanks. Good. All right, Red, get them unloaded. All right, let's work on this truck first. Sir, Lieutenant, with your permission, I'd like to have some of your guys help us, huh? Sure. Max, get the boys and give them a hand, will you? Okay, you guys. On the double. How many tanks have you got here? Well, we have ten, but there's more coming up. Put them in the trucks. Take them out of the trucks. Put them in, in the trucks. Put them in the trucks. Take them out of the trucks. That's a good rhythm. Hey, what happened? Did you boys take the wrong road? You're up here with the men are doing the fighting. Oh, well, we came up here to check on a rumor that you fellas were selling this stuff to the crowds. There we are. But you ought to see the price they're paying for it. Now, you jokers, I got a soft touch. You not only sit around on your butts all day driving around the country, but when you get here, we have to do your work for you. Lift and load. Lift and load. Lift and load. Lift and load. One for Hitler. One for Hitler. And one for the road. Lift and load. Lift and load. Lift and load. They uh, look like they work pretty well together. Yeah. Good outfit. Are you guys in a gravy train? What is this, an army outfit or a minstrel show? You think this is a gravy train, I'll swap your jobs. You drive my truck and I'll drive your tank. Are you kidding, buddy? You think I'd leave one of Patton's tank companies for a lousy 4F gold brick outfit like this? You know, Sergeant, if I were you, I wouldn't talk about the Red Ball Express that way. Oh, the Red Ball Express. Well, we call it the Foul Ball Express. Oh. Oh, wait a minute, Lieutenant. What do you mean? Your boys are liable to get hurt. My tank is that tough. We better stop this. Come on. No, no. If there's anything I ever learned in life, it's not to interfere in other people's fights. See this scar? I got that trying to be a peacemaker. I don't see any scar. It's there, all right. Come on, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> Enjoying yourselves, gentlemen? No, yes, sir. sir. Ten 
I've always said that men enjoy a fight. And don't believe anybody who says I'm a liar. But the battle is up there ahead of you. Save your fists and your energy for the fanatics who got us into this war. Don't use them in petty arguments with the men who supply the lifeblood to your fighting outfit. If it weren't for the Red Ball Express and the men in it pushing through supplies, we might never be able to keep attacking. And every day we can attack means we're that much nearer the end of the war. Now get over and help those Red Ball drivers load whatever you need into your tanks. And whenever they hand you a gallon of gas or a bullet, be grateful. Because it might be the one that saves your life and the life of your country. And when you're through, tankers, meet me two miles down the road. We'll see how eager you are to fight there. <laughs> 